Hi, I'm Ted Nelson. I want to talk about the structure of computer documents. Now, most people think they know what electronic documents are because they've seen them. They've seen Microsoft Word, they've seen Adobe, Adobe Acrobat, and what are computer documents like? They imitate paper. Well, when I was learning to write in my teens, it seemed to me that paper was a prison. Four walls, right? And the ideas were constantly trying to escape. What is a parenthesis but an idea trying to escape? What is a footnote but an idea that, tried, that jumped off the cliff? Because paper enforces single sequence, and there's no room for digression, it imposes a particular kind of order in the very nature of the structure. When I saw the computer, I said, at last we can escape from the prison of paper. And that was what my whole hypertext idea was about in 1960 and since. Contrarily, what did the other people do? They imitated paper which to me seems totally insane. The Bravo project at Xerox PARC became Microsoft Word. The Interpress project at Xerox PARC became Adobe Acrobat, and no dissenters. Even Doug Engelbart's system, the original, while it modeled paper documents, had deep linkage, whereas uh, it seems to me that we need entirely different structures. Where are the marginal notes? Why can't you make marginal notes on Microsoft Word or Adobe Acrobat? And that's just the beginning. What do you want in electronic documents that is not possible on paper? Well, for one thing, parallelism. You want things on the side. Marginal notes are one thing that can be on the side, but you can also have, consider the writing of history. What is history? It's many parallel streams of events which meet at certain points. So why not create them as parallel structures? That makes it easier to write, easier to read. Um, many links. Now, when we say links these days, we mean these one-way, the one-way things that can't overlap and have no types. I'm not talking about that. We want to have deep links. And finally, we want to see the origins of content. So to me, the computer was an opportunity to re radically redefine the nature of writing and the nature of the document. And I've been on that for the last 47 years. So while everybody else was imitating paper, uh, Project Xanadu on its mountaintop and under various difficult circumstances has been endeavoring to get something going that's entirely different from the prevailing paradigm. But if you fight the existing paradigm, it's tough. So here is the latest we have. Here we are in Xanadu space. This is three-dimensional setup, and we see a document of 11 different pages. Now, I'm going to fly through it in 3D, and you can see the various different connections between the documents. There are only 27, I think, connections between these 11 pages, but you can see how complex they get, because we are allowing overlap and interconnection of any, in any quantity, potentially hundreds or millions of links. How do we keep them sorted out? Aha! That is the nice touch here. In the front, we have two pages. The, the current page with the large type and its companion page with the smaller type. And this connection is a transclusion. That is the same content in two places. It is not a link. It is not represented by link structures. It is differently found. So here we have, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth in a quotation, and here in the, uh, in the companion document is the origin in the King James Bible. Now, I just made this, I just made the companion document, the companion page, the current page. We'll go back to the current page, to this current page, and step through to various documents, and we see, as we step through the, page, the connections on this page, that the other documents swarf into position, it's swoop plus morph, they swarf into position, and the connections become exactly uh, readable. So one connection at a time, we can follow what the, uh, what the uh,
connections actually mean, even though we are in a huge conglomerate of many different connections. So that's it. That is Xanadu Space. That is the latest version, and I hope it will be a product soon of a uh, document with real hypertext and real links in real profusion. So we have transclusion, parallelism, a generalized media format. So, in fact, that actually gives us a way of looking at the same media format, pardon me, the same structure can be used to represent audio, video, and any mix of audio, video, and text so that you can use this type of link or flink, as we call it, floating link, for in and out points on audio and video. You can edit in place and create arbitrarily rich, transclusive structures of audio and video. You know, you know what I mean by that? That you can find the original context of any sound bite or any shot in videos or video or movies. See, this to me is a real representation in depth of literature as it should always have been. And anything less is a compromise with tradition and shallowness. When they first built the horseless carriage, there was a socket for a buggy whip. Why? Because it made the driver feel better if he had a whip, even if there was no horse to whip it with. Similarly, to whip with it. Similarly, the techies have imitated the conventional media of the past. They have imitated paper documents phonograph record tracks, radio programs, and sequential movies. Why? When we could have movies that branch and branch and branch forever and keep track of them because they have xenological structure and you can make marginal notes and make uh, parallel structures of all of them with transclusion as an immediate option at all times. This is a radical proposal for a completely new different system of media and representing each user as a simultaneous reader and writer, which is what we really are. Thank you for your attention.